Okay, today we're going to look at improper integrals. And before we do that, let's review what we've learned before. When we get ready to integrate, there are a couple of questions that we need to ask. First, we want to ask ourselves, is it a basic rule? Um, can I use power, a power rule or a trig rule or an inverse trig? And then I want to ask, if I can't do that, can I simplify it so that I can do that? Can I factor, multiply, divide, um, look at a Pythagorean identity? And then the next question I want to ask, is it rational? Can I use partial fractions or long division or complete the square to see if it's inverse trig? Can I use U substitution? Will du be in the original equation is the question I want to ask. And when all else fails, that's when I want to use integration by parts. Remember, we want to think horses, not zebras. Generally, the simplest solution is the best solution. In this unit, we're looking at improper proper integrals. And today, we're only going to look evaluate improper, improper integrals that have infinite uh, limits of integration. We will do part B tomorrow. So far, all of the integrals that we've done have had finite limits of integration. Today, we're going to look at what happens if we have infinite limits of integration or if we integrate over a point of discontinuity. I want you to think about the graph y equals e to the negative x. Think about what that looks like and see if you can find the area under the curve. You can pause this for a second to see if you can figure that out. You probably could not figure out what was the area under the curve because the area is infinite. It goes on and on forever. And because of that, we can't use uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus. Why? The FTC is, you can only use it on finite limits of integration. And since this is not a finite, we could not use FTC as it is. We're going to have to manipulate it in order to use the FTC. If you get, grab your notes, um, and write this down in your notes. This is um, on at the top of the page. It says definition of an improper integral. If you can go ahead and write this down, you can pause this if you have to. But an integral that is discontinuous on its integral. For instance, if I were to integrate um, from 0 to 2, um, I'll just give you an example here. Grab the pen. So if I want to integrate from 0 to 2 of 1 over x minus 1, this has a point of discontinuity because at x equals 1, this function is not um, defined. So I'm integrating over a point of discontinuity. That would be an example of an improper integral. Also, if I integrate it from 0 to infinity, Minus 1. That has other issues too. Well, no, x equals 1. So that has other issues. But anytime I go from a constant to infinity, that's also improper. So those are the two things we want to look for in determining if something is improper. Again, you want to write this down in your notes. And these are this is what we do when we have an improper integral. If it goes from a to infinity, we want to find the limit from b to infinity of a to b. Or if it's going from negative infinity to b, we want to set up a limit. And if it goes from negative infinity to infinity, then we have to break that integral up into two separate integrals and go from negative infinity to c and c to infinity, where c is any real number. If you need additional time, you can pause this video and write this down. This is important terminology, especially as we get into Unit 2 um, and really throughout BC. If an integral has a finite limit of integration, in other words, if you integrate and you get a number, a constant, we say that the integral converges. But if you integrate and you find that the answer is infinity, either positive or negative infinity, then we say it diverges. 
In formula three above, when we had to separate it in two, into two integrals, if either of those integrals diverge, then the entire thing diverges. In order for it to converge, they both must converge. They both must produce a finite answer. This is important. Please write it down. So let's go back to our example, y is equal to e to the negative x. Well, in order to find the area in the curve, you know that we would have to integrate from 0 to infinity because that goes on and on forever. In order to integrate that, I'm going to have to use u substitution. So I let u equal to e to the negative x. du is equal to uh, negative e to the negative x. Before I did that, I had to set it up in its form. So I'm integrating from 0 to b of e to the ne negative x, and then I'm allowing the limit, taking the limit as b approaches infinity. And as I already said, I integrated this using u substitution. Now I'm evaluating for b and 0. I pulled out the negative. I'm going to write e to the negative b as 1 over e to the b. And of course, e to the 0 is 0. Now when I take the limit as x approaches infinity, as b approaches infinity, e to the b is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So 1 over e to the b is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and it's going towards 0. And of course, the limit as b approaches infinity of negative 1 is simply negative 1 because it really doesn't affect it. So our answer is 1. Because we have a finite answer, this limit is said to converge. The integral is said to converge because our answer is finite. Now, how can we verify our answer? One thing that you can do is if you have a TI-89, you can actually put in the infinity sign. And I think you can do the same thing on the CAS, the TI-84 with CAS. But if you don't have either of those calculators, what you can do is you can do a definite integral and maybe integrate from 0 to 50, then 0 to 100. Eventually, it's going to give you an overflow error. But what numbers is it approaching? What number is it getting closer and closer to? And that probably will give you your answer. But you may be asking, how can this have a finite answer when the area goes on and on forever? Well, I've kind of drawn it here. What I want you to see is that as this goes towards infinity, this value is getting closer and closer and closer to zero so that it's becoming negligible. So at the end, it's like we're adding 0 0.0000001, which doesn't affect our answer. So as we get closer and closer to the axis, this area becomes negligible. Although it's never quite zero, it's just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It's becoming ne negligible, and that's why it has a finite answer. Understanding that concept will help you when we get to unit two. Now, um, I'm sorry, I forgot to erase this. I tried this before and had some issues, so um, I'm just going to kind of talk you through the answers here. So we started off with this problem, um, dx over x from 1 to infinity. So we have to set this up. We take the limit as b approaches infinity, and we're going from 1 to b of x dx. And of course, integrating this gives us 1 half x squared, and we're evaluating it from 1 to b. Substituting in for what we have, we end up with 1 half the limit as b approaches infinity of 1 half b squared minus 1, because 1, um, well, actually 1 half. As b goes towards infinity, this has no effect, and so this stays 1 half. However, as b goes towards infinity here, that makes this goes towards infinity. So essentially, 1 half of infinity is still infinity. So I have infinity minus 1 half. This is negligible. It doesn't really make a difference. So my answer is infinity, and it diverges. Our next example is 1 to infinity of 2x cubed dx. So once again, I set it up. I'm going from 1 to b, and I'm taking the limit as b approaches infinity. Integrating 2x cubed. 2 over x cubed dx is like saying 2x to the negative 3. 
So I add 1, which gives me negative 2, and then I divide by that negative 2. So I have 2 divided by negative 2, which gives me negative 1. And I'm taking the limit as b approaches infinity. I'm going to write, when I evaluate for b, I'm going to write that as 1 over b squared. If this is 1 over b squared minus 1, as b goes towards infinity, just like we had before, this b is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and 1 divided by a really, really big number is 0. So I have negative 1 minus 1, I get 1. Again, this is finite, so it converges. One way to remember this is if it's finite, it gives us a constant, and constant starts with c, so it converges. This is infinite. And the i in infinite matches with the i in diverges. That's just a way to remember if you need help with that. And so the first one diverged, the second one converged to 1. Now, here's something that you need to know looking ahead to the next unit. If I have the integral from any constant, this can be any constant, and this could be any constant. Okay? Any constant to infinity, and if this is any constant, <clears throat> We call this a p-series. And we have x to some number, some p. If p is greater than 1, it converges. So what we saw in our last problem, we had 2 over x cubed, it converged. If I had 2 over x4, it would converge. If I had 10 over x to the fifth, it would converge. If p is between 0 and 1, then it diverges. So what we saw from the last example, we had p equals 1, and we had diverge. If p equal to a half, it would diverge as well. As well. A lot of times when we're doing this, kids will ask, well, what if it's negative? What if p is negative? Well, if p is negative, then it's no longer a p-series, because then I write this as x to the fourth. And I'd have to deal with this um, in the normal manner. So it's a p-series because um, the denominator, you have a um, variable in the denominator raised to an exponent. Okay? So that's the difference. You need to know this for next unit. And it will help you on, on this test. Okay. So let's just recap what we learned. If the result of an improper integral is constant, then the integral is said to converge. If the result of an improper integral is infinity, then the integral is said to diverge. If we have a p-series, and this is any constant, if p, and we go integrating from 1 or some constant to infinity, if p is greater than 1, then it converges. If it's between 0 and 1, it diverges. Your homework assignment um, is listed. There's some of these that you may not be able to do yet because we are breaking this up into two days. But I want you to try what you can, and we will talk about this tomorrow. Have a good evening.